Is Norway another country teaching Great Britain how to deal with spares who are causing, well, let's just say a little bit of trouble. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we're gonna to be talking about the announcement that came earlier this week from Princess Martha Louise of Norway. She is marrying a guy who basically everybody thinks is a swindler and a crook. He calls himself a shaman and they released this a statement from the palace and announced in this video that basically she is, for all intents and purposes, out as a working member of the royal family. In addition, she cannot use her title in any official business venture. And not to mention the fact she had to get up all her patronages. And basically she's been just sort of severed from the royal household. And this has been a long time coming because She's a little loosey-goosey, I think is the best way to put it. The nicest way to put it, she's a little loosey-goosey. She talks to angels, she talks to dead people. She, she's, a, she's a little odd. She's definitely a little odd. And it has come to the point where it was just too much. In addition to all the stuff that she's done, her fiance, Daruk Verrett, is also rather problematic as he says you can force yourself not to have cancer and it's cancer is something you want and when he got covid he said it was because he was overworked he 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 meditated and connected with the universe and the universe told him he was overworking and that's why he got it and his little talisman that he told people could protect them from covid whoops it didn't even work for him i mean if there's nothing that screams swindler it's when you sell a talisman to people for 222 dollars and it doesn't even work for you <laughs> sorry i have to laugh the, I, I always feel deeply Bless your heart if you follow the line of this shaman. I do actually feel sorry for Martha Louise. There's actually a decent amount of tragedy, I think, that's behind this relationship, which I'll share a bit. And how it's another example of how Charles can go further with Harry and Meghan. Yes, Harry and Meghan got the initial, well, you can't use your HRH. You are stripped of your patronages but that took some of that took a year in terms of stripping of the patronages well now maybe it's time to go down the norway route and say you know what not only can you not use your hrh we're so sorry you can't use the duke and duchess of sussex title in anything in any official capacity and i will also have a brief update for you guys as well on the danish spare situation there's a lot of spare drama going on right now in addition to harry there's a lot of spares and i actually have an idea i think i'm planning for next year to launch right around the time of harry's book launch which i think could maybe be a rather interesting subject to explore. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany and I love talking about royals and the history and the heritage of these fantastic royal houses who have many fabulous members in addition to some crazy ones. <laughs> Isn't that like every single family in the world? Honestly, some of the historical ones are kind of get on the very end of the crazy scale. So some of this may look radical, but it's, <laughs> it's better than what some people have done throughout history. So let's Let's be honest here, but I think it is important to discuss these matters and how royalty, although it can be seen as an archaic institution, I try to explain why it's relevant today and why we still need to have it. Those are things I enjoy discussing. In addition, I'll be reviewing television shows, movies, and sharing a bit of history too. I had a live stream I did about my initial reaction to the first episode and a half or two of, or so of The Crown, and I plan on doing a whole season review as soon as I can get enough time to actually finish watching it. My schedule is very, very busy. I try to upload several times a week. So if you guys love royals and love royal content, feel free to subscribe. I also have Royal Fashion News where I discuss the best and worst fashion looks of the week. And I do a TR Tuesday every Tuesday and I plan on growing and expanding what I'm offering there. So I'm very excited. So if you guys want to check that out as well, that would be fabulous. And I also have a trip coming up to the UK and I'll put details down there down below. If you'd like to come and tour the UK with me, I would absolutely love to have you. We will have a fabulous time. We will be in London right after the King's coronation around Memorial Day. In addition, we'll also be going to the Cotswolds. So if you just want to have a bit of fun and enjoy royal stuff with me, that would be that would be absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. I do have to have a certain threshold number of people going for actually the trip to go through. So, and we have early bird pricing going on right now. So feel free to go head over there and sign up 
for that as well. I've been to London several times. I was there for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and I love getting around London. It's one of my favorite places. It's a fantastic city and definitely worth putting on your bucket list. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the description box down below as well. But the shaman thing, oh, oh, Martha Louise, Martha Louise. And again, this is a long history that she's had some kind of interesting ideas is the nicest way to put it. And so this has caused a bit of consternation for quite a while. This is something that the palace is like, if you could just rein that in a bit, that would, that would be, that would be awesome. But she's managed to keep her patronages, keep her titles. However, she has decided to marry this uh, guru who apparently is friends or at least knows and has worked with Gwyneth Paltrow and so he's a celebrity guru shaman type and she got hooked up with him and apparently they are going to get married at some point. They seem very excited about it. But most people at this point are very disturbed by this, the two of them together and what they're trying to sell the public. That's I think the biggest issue here. And what was rather interesting too is that they initially were trying to deflect the criticism from some of his crazy theories, which I'll go into, by saying that, well, everything, everything criticizing him is racism. It's racist. We all know where we've heard that before, right? We're deflecting valid criticism by citing racism. That's that's what they've done. But I will say, I think Martha Louise, I do have deep, deep sympathy for her. And I think, unfortunately, this guy glommed onto her at a very vulnerable time. So Princess Martha Louise met her shaman in 2018. And on Christmas Day, Christmas Day, in 2019, her ex-husband committed suicide and left three daughters behind and herself. And this is obviously a huge tragedy. This is terrible. This is awful. And I feel great sympathy for Princess Martha Louise and her children because that is a terrible tragedy. Not to mention the fact that I feel like doing it on a, a holiday is, is especially cruel to the family and it's just an incredibly sad moment. But she met him before obviously the suicide occurred, but I feel like when you lose somebody like that, you're even more vulnerable. So perhaps if this Varekta guy did not have the best intentions at heart, it made it a bit easier with the loss of her ex-husband to worm his way into her heart and affections. And so they have decided to get married and obviously, he said some pretty crazy things. So here's some of what was covered in the New York Times. He has said that he has an amulet to fight off the coronavirus, which he was trying to sell for $222. He has suggested that cancer is a choice and that he has also said that he has a hybrid species of reptilian. So he is part reptile, guys, in case, in case you didn't know that. I mean, that's a keeper right there. Most of the time we think those people are crazy, but no, he's, he's a keeper. So he has apparently gone around to hospitals and asked cancer patients, including children, why do you want this cancer? Which is incredibly, I feel like, insulting. My mom actually has cancer. She's had can stage four cancer for almost six years now. Does she want it? No. <laughs> Does anybody want cancer? No. I mean, come on, who wants that? So this idea that he's going around asking people, well, why do you want cancer? Especially children. I know a former coworker, her, one of her babies, her infant had cancer. Can you imagine giving an infant cancer who cannot speak? So he, this was before he was a year old, cannot speak and has no idea why you're pumping something like chemotherapy into him. No idea. Did he ask for that? Of course not. What? Like, that's crazy. And obviously people in Norway were pretty upset by this. And I feel like in general, Norway is, is fairly liberal. But this just, again, went really too far. He has explained that he is a hybrid species of reptilian and Andromeda who has come to shake up the system. It was deleted <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons because people found out and went, Whoa, hey now, that's 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 not what anybody wants. And so this is funny that when he got COVID, he said in an Instagram video that he, the reason was he was a workaholic, constantly there for people and giving, giving, giving. And he realized he needed to take time to do his breath work and listen to his ancestors and that he had to use his white light bringer amulet to get the poisons out of his system. Needless to say, the, the Norwegian public was not amused. But the thing is, Martha Louise, she ain't much better. She ain't much better. And the combination of the two, ooh, 
that's that's a bad combo. So she has very much is into the supernatural. She has communicated with angels and dead people, and about 47% thought her practices had a negative effect on the royal family. So obviously going to show that there is interest and there's a surging interest in ghosts and spirits in Norway. And she also believes that she can see people's feelings and basically that she can communicate with horses and, and other animals too. And she has co-founded a spiritual center that encourages and tries to grow this. And this center, students are encouraged to find their inner source of truth and to make contact with the angels and divine in your universe. In a broadcast workshop, she instructed participants to ask your guardian angel if there is anything it wants to tell you. So you can understand how the marriage between Daruk Verret and Princess Martha Louise would cause a lot of concern in Norway. Nobody's looking at this going, Ooh, this is, this is a fabulous union right here. They even went on a tour called the Princess and the Shaman. So the Norway's royal palace is like, okay, we got to put a stop to this. This is, this is a no go anymore. So Martha Louise has officially been basically stripped up. She's still a member of the family. She can still go to family events, but most of her official duties have been taken from her. So go ahead and take a listen to their, basically their resignation video. Every time a person in the royal family gets engaged, it creates media storms. So also this time. From the last month's discussions in the media, my fiancé, Dirk Barrett, and I have, together with the king and queen and the rest of the royal family, landed on some adjustments. I will step down from my official duties as patron for various organizations. My heart goes out to the organizations and the wonderful people I've met through representing them for several decades and the important work they do. There will be someone else from the royal family continuing my patronage. I will continue the separation between my prince's title and my role as a businesswoman where I only use Martha Louise on social media, media productions and such, and Dirk is following suit. First of all, I would like to emphasize that there has been no discord within the royal family through this process. We have embraced each other's opinions and views in an amicable fashion, with respect and love for one another. I would also like to clarify the fact that when in the future we do get married, <laughs> I li like my uncles Erling Lundsen, Johan Martin Farner, and my late husband Ari Ben, Durek will not receive a title. True to tradition, he will also not represent the royal house, but will be present at family occasions and some occasional sport events. I have always wanted to support my fiance Martha Louise and I want her to be happy. If her life has become difficult because of some of the things that I have done, then that was never my intention. The same goes for her parents, the king and queen. I want them to be successful in the important roles that they have. I have, through the conversations with the family, learned a lot. I've gained a deeper understanding of the work of the royal family in Norway and I respect their constitutional role. I know that some of the things I have said and done have been seen as controversial in Norway. Some have even argued that this has become a problem for the monarchy. I want to make it clear that this was never my intention. I wish Martha's family well and I want to do my part to support them in their roles. At the same time, it is important for me to maintain my own integrity and to be true to myself. I, like everyone else, have a right to autonomy, to determine what I believe in and to speak up about it. I hope what Martha and I and the royal family have agreed on will create the space necessary for this balance to work and to be more robust. I also want to clarify that I am for the School of Medicine and always have been because I have seen several occasions in my life where I've been saved by the School of Medicine 
And I have great respect for the institution and for the people working in the healthcare system. I honor and respect them for what they do. However, I do believe that we should always use all available resources for health on our planet, not instead of, but in addition to the healthcare system. I have a background from the healthcare system as a physiotherapist and know the importance of scientifically proven healthcare. In addition to that, I think alternative medicine can be an important supplement to the school medicine for many people. Acupuncture, yoga, meditation, crystals and nature medicine can be a supplement in addition to the healthcare system for better mental and physical health. And it is in the bridging of the two, like having acupuncture in maternity wards in hospitals, as many parts of the country has as an asset, or using horses as part of psychiatric treatment, like at Gauster Hospital here in Oslo, that I want to continue like I have for the last 20 years. I hope these steps will lead to a calmer and more peaceful environment regarding my fiancé, Dirk Verrett, and myself. I do find it interesting that, well, although they're saying, well, conventional medicine is, is great, they're also going, but we also need to explore other things. Not that other avenues of medicine aren't, can't be valid either. I think sometimes, obviously, the pharmaceutical industry runs a lot of medicine and they have their own ends because they need to make a profit. So there might be something else that's natural that's actually better for you in certain situations and they don't encourage you to look for that. So I totally get that. However, they're also saying things that are damaging, that put, pulls the monarchy into disrepute, that makes people question the king, the queen, the future king, Crown Prince Akan, and then you have Princess Ingrid Alexander, who's going to be the queen after her father. So she's pulling because of her interesting and enlightening comments on this side over here. She's pulling the rest of the royal family into it. So they've said at this point, hey, you can have your own business opportunities, but your, your princess title can't be anywhere in there. So basically she's been stripped of pretty much everything in a lot of ways, except for she still officially does have her title. She just can't use it basically in any situation other than a family event. And she's been stripped of all her patronages and she has no formal role in Norway anymore. And she didn't have a ton anyways. Norway in terms of population is a small country. So there's not a ton that they're looking for the royal family to do necessarily. But this does raise a huge interesting question for Charles. What can he gleam from this? And I thought when I was watching their video explaining why they were leaving, I thought, does anybody else feel like they, if this is like a hostage video? <laughs> That's what I kind of thought, but it's a video they had to do because we haven't really gotten anything like that from Harry and Meghan. But at this point, I feel like the British should take a leaf out of Norway's book and go, okay, Harry and Meghan, they're still causing problems. Meghan just basically interfered in the US election. I'll post a link to that video up above, but basically she interfered in the US election. That is completely inappropriate. I don't care if she is an American citizen. She has no business telling anybody that she voted and basically implying who you should vote for. If you don't know, in the United States, we have celebrities all the time that post pictures of themselves after they voted, but we all know who they vote for. And generally they get mad if you don't vote the way they want you to. I, most celebrities had a meltdown after Donald Trump came into the office. This is not a political statement. They just if you don't vote with their way, they're mad about it. So they want you to vote, but only vote in a particular way. And when Megan did that, that's what she's screaming to the world is, I voted yes, and you should vote the same way I did too. So again, this is hugely problematic when it comes to the Norwegian household. And so they're like, okay, no longer can you use your royal title in any official business. And I feel like Charles needs to do the same. Charles needs to say, well, technically you have these titles, but you can only use them at family events in the UK and that's it. You cannot call, you cannot call yourselves the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. You cannot call an evening with Meghan Markle an evening with the Duchess of Sussex. You can't do that anymore. You are Meghan Markle, you are Prince Harry and that's it. Or actually they, she can't even use princess titles. So you are Harry and you are Meghan and that's it. That's all you can be. And I feel like that is the way the British monarchy needs to go. Because I think in order to survive in this new world, you need to be able to cut off the basically 
the dead part. So what I mean by that is when you were on a battlefield way back in the day, if your leg had gangrene on it, they would usually slice your leg off, amputate your leg at a particular point, same thing with your arms, to prevent the gangrene from spreading and to get rid of the sick basically the the negative or the sick part that's kind of draining the that's draining the rest of the body in this situation the british monarchy needs to do the same and i realize again i've said this before i believe charles and william are trying to give harry an in whenever harry and Meghan get divorced it's a question always for me of when not if so i believe harry and Meghan will get divorced at some point and charles and and william are trying to protect harry give harry the out that he needs at some point because they realize He's gonna need it. He, things aren't, I don't feel like going well necessarily for Harry and Meghan behind the scenes. Harry will need his lifeline at some point. So the monarchy's like, okay, we can offer this to him. However, they also have to deal with the reality that Harry and Meghan are a drain on the system. They are a infected limb that needs to be removed because they pull the monarchy into disrepute with their sons. We still don't know what's in the reality TV show. We don't know what's in Harry's memoir. And these are things that may happen after those events. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing because the monarchy, all monarchies need to remind their members those opportunities and those influences that you have as a royal are no longer a right but are a privilege. And that privilege can be stripped from you if you step out of the lines of what you need to do. And that is hard and that is difficult, but you do have the choice to step away if you decide, hey, you know what? I cannot follow these guidelines. I need to step away. That's when the monarchy can be like, okay, well, we, we know what to do because we've laid the foundation and the framework. So if you decide you no longer want to be a working member, well, guess what? You can't really use your royal title in any particular situations. If you're given a gifted a dukedom title, well, hey, you know what? That no longer applies. You have to get that back. You don't get to keep it when you leave. Because Harry and Meghan, especially Meghan, Meghan has no clue about the monarchy, no clue about the, how the system worked. So when she left, she just thought she could get everything the same way that it was and the monarchy would bend over backwards to please her like it had done for the most part while she was there. Even though she complains about it, pretty much the monarchy bent over backwards for her. But at the end of the day, they're like, yeah, no, no, we, we can't do that. And I feel like it's, it's this incremental thing is that they need to say, okay, more and more and more because just like Andrew as well, they need to set up going, okay, if you decide that you're going to associate with people who are awful human beings who are involved in human trafficking, well, guess what? You don't get to keep your royal title anymore. You don't get to be the Duke of York anymore. Harry and Meghan, if you are using your royal titles to leverage for money, for election purposes, for to peddle influence in Hollywood, I'm so sorry, but guess what? That's no longer an option for you anymore because you're, you're now just Harry and Meghan. Bravo, good luck with that. And I feel like, again, this is what the monarchy needs to do. And this is what all the monarchies in Europe, they need to have a framework. They need to have a notion of what they will do if they're hit with a Martha Louise and Harry situation. Harry, even though I don't feel like he's says Lucy goosey and as crazy as Martha Louise is, he is in the same boat ones where he's a drag on his family now. He's no longer a benefit. He's a liability and they have to deal with it sometimes in the most brutal way possible, just like they had to on the battlefield to help the soldiers survive. And perhaps it's an awful, it's a terrible moment at that time, but eventually the person learns how to walk without that additional limb or learns how to do things without the additional limb and the whole system goes on. And it's not the quite, the analogy is not quite the same because obviously with the addition of the whales as kids, you can grow limbs back. So the analogy doesn't quite work, but you understand what I'm saying is that this, this aspect of the monarchy is no longer working and you need to make the severing more official. It needs to be completely separated. You need to be able to see sunlight between these two aspects of the body. And if you don't, you're gonna have problems for the foreseeable future. They can still come to family events, they can still be family, but they can't be seen as royals. That, that cannot apply anymore and have the system function and survive. So that is something Charles needs to deeply, deeply consider about the 
the shaman and the princess. We don't need <laughs> the actress and the prince. We, we don't need that. We don't need a tour about that. We get enough from Harry and Meghan. So hopefully Martha Weiss didn't give them any ideas. But that's, I feel like, the best way for the monarchy to deal with this in the future. And just like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll share with you a bit about Prince Joachim and who is the son of Queen Marguerite of Denmark. So he and his family came up in the international news because the queen had decided to strip his children, because he is the second born son, strip his children of their HRH and their his or her royal highness and their prince and princess titles. So this was something Joachim that had been discussed, but apparently somehow the mis the communication broke down or Joachim threw his mother and the rest of the family under the bus after the announcement was made, feigning ignorance as if, I don't know what this was happening, it was sudden, to try to maybe perhaps leverage his, his mother and brother for a jockey for a better position. I'm not entirely sure, but apparently now the family is moving out of France. So they had moved to France so he could work basically as a defense attache. In, in Paris at the Danish embassy. So that contract or that job has officially ended. So it's unclear if they'll end up back in Denmark. They've, they've been rather vague on if they'll go back or not, or if they'll perhaps go somewhere else. Princess Marie, is, she's from France, so I, could, I don't know why they would move out of France and not move back to Denmark. That would make more sense. They have been officially told they just don't even have really much of a role anymore. And that's how a lot of these royal families are trending. So Harry and Meghan would have been phased out at some point anyways. So again, it does make sense for them to leave, but Harry and Meghan did it in the worst way possible. And although I feel like Princess Martha Louise was drug a bit kicking and screaming to this conclusion. I, f I hope she's happy in her relationship. Again, she's dealt with a lot of tragedy, so I understand that. I hope he does end up being good for her, but also a shaman who sells trinkets for $222 that don't even work for him. Um, that's, that's swindler level. I, I don't think he's much of a shaman, but guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this latest development in the spare drama that's consumed Europe, and will Charles go further? Will, at, will it be after the reality TV show, the memoir? Will he officially basically strip Harry and Meghan of pretty much everything and really sever the ro official royal relationship like he needs to. Obviously, they're still family. I hope Harry goes and visits his family. I hope his kids can visit his family. That's not the issue. But when it comes to the monarchy, at the end of the day, it is a business. It's a family, but it's also a business. And sometimes you need to let go of the part that's dragging you down. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.